I mean, we've never seen a, a presidential season like we did in 2016. Donald Trump was a quintessential outsider. He ran against the Republican establishment. He emerged as the, as the front runner and then the nominee of the party. But he has governed as a president who essentially tunes in and responds to his base, not the majority of American people. While many Americans thought that once he got in the White House that he would pivot to try to serve all of the American people. And I'm not saying that he's not trying to serve us, but I'm saying the, the service and the message that he provides each and every day is to keep his base, you know, very, if you want to call it entertain, energized, if you want to call him whatever. energized, yeah. if you want to call him inspired. But, you know, Trump, who I do believe at this point should be much higher in the polls, yeah. given the economy, yeah. remains on the water, I believe, because he has, he has failed to really try to unify the American people. So he, he's gone into his re-election mode, probably in the worst shape of any president seeking a second term. But we do know from history that presidents often win second terms. So with, with very few exceptions, I mean, the most recent one, of course, yeah. being George Herbert Walker Bush when Bill Clinton defeated him. And of course, Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. So we'll see what happens in 2020. It's a full circle moment when, you know, your neighborhood uh, supports you and holds you high, and then you are in a position to come back and be able to hold it up on, on in your own way, you know, and, and take it further. So it was just important for me to, you know, link up with the Boys and Girls Club because they're re truthfully one of the only people or foundations or, you know, companies, organizations, there you go, that's a good word, that are in the community and that are based in the community and live in the community and it is the community, you know what I mean? So that was why I was important for the Sean Anderson Foundation to link up with the Boys and Girls Club, get the re recording studio in here, to, you know, throw a down weekend in here to have fun, to have, you know, a nice little carnival and free food and everything for everybody, free haircuts, free hair braids and stuff. I think it could save somebody's life if they have somewhere to go, you know? I think it could save somebody's life, I think it could, um, change somebody's life. And I hope I don't get too emotional, but as a single parent, I remember just being so scared. Mm. Uh, I would see boys, the police off the block, you know, police come and drag them out in handcuffs. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I just want to get kids off the street. I understand the climate of this world right now. I understand the, um, I understand what I know to be true. Mm -hmm. And um, again, it's just my proud privilege to um, take advantage of my time with um, people who are responsible for our tomorrow. <laughs> and a lot of the young thinkers in here, thinkers in here, are um, responsible. Um, so tap dance becomes uh, the vehicle, mm -hmm. you know. But the message is not only be a great tap dancer, but be present today. Be yourself. Know how to express yourself today in this climate, in this now. Be a voice. I don't care if you're five or seven or 50. <laughs> Exist. And if it takes a tap class for us to be reminded that, oh, I, it's important that I say something. <laughs> it's important that I recognize that I got to move too <laughs> in the climate of um, this today. So I'm um, happy to do that through tap dancing. Express yourself, not only as a tap dancer, but as a human being. Talk about some of the stories that you're trying to tell with the, the art that you're creating. Yes, yes, and that, that's about life in general. Okay, particularly the African American life. Okay, because that's the only thing that I know about. <laughs> right. So that's the only thing that I'm going to paint about. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I, I gravitated from, from that from an early age, during the Black Panther movement in, in, uh, in California. Uh, was was a very active during my college days, and I used my art to accentuate that activity. And from one thing just kept leading to another, and then I learned in corporate America how to make money at it. <laughs> so, and that's where that success yeah. element versus, versus um, fame mm -hmm. got into my mix and what I do for, for my society of artists. Yeah. Uh, go back to the, the 60s and the things that were going on. Yes. Um, how, how much did uh, that time not just influence your art then, but has it sort of influenced you across time? Oh, right. Every, everything that's happened in our society, particularly with African Americans, that's what fed me. Uh -huh. That's what kept me energized. That's what kept me active. That's what kept me, kept giving me the call to, to communicate mm -hmm. through the art. Mm -hmm. And so I've done that all my life, and I continue to do it today. Talk about how the music will kind of reflect uh, the mood of, of, of the day? Well, the, the, um, it's kind of conceived uh, from a, uh, the memory of, of a, a very old slave. And uh, originally when I wrote it, uh, it was in two, in two parts, uh, um, uh, June 18th, 1865 and June 19th, 1865, you know, one being the last day of slavery and mm -hmm. then the first day of, metaphorically, the first yes. day of, of, <laughs> of freedom. And I've, I've written a couple other movements that uh, kind of invoked his uh, uh, um, memory of freedom in Africa, and then uh, uh, the last movement movement is about you know the freedom here in the United States, and then the middle movements are kind of about the the, the rough patch in between, yeah. you know, of of, uh, of of being enslaved and all that all that went into that. Yeah. 